Welcome to the show, everybody. Uh, I have a great guest with me today. One of my favorite people, someone that I cherish my friendship with, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Terrace Martin. Hey, 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 hey. How you doing, my bro? Part two, Elmo. Part two, let's get it. Part two, man, let's get it. Every time you and I, you and I talk a lot, we usually talk in the mornings. Mm-hmm. We usually get the 7 a.m. FaceTime in because nobody mm-hmm. else is up. Mm-hmm. But us, because you got parents and I got a company. Mm-hmm. You got parents, you got kids. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kids and a few companies. <laughs> you got kids and a few companies, and I got yeah. one company. Yeah, I got a few companies. Yeah. And it, it's it's just something that by by waking up early, um, yeah, I started doing that years ago because my mom always says, you know, you want to start the day early, you want to get those early thoughts. You know what I'm saying? Those early, fresh ideas. If if you're a person that makes a, a decent living off of ideas, you want to get them the best way you can. So the morning time is the best. I think regardless, even if you want to be a person making money off your ideas or whatever you're doing, you have the most clear mind in the morning. Your yeah. brain is rested. Yeah. Well, I was trying, I, I didn't want to say regardless, but I, it, but <laughs> it is fucking right. If you're fucking sleeping to 11, 12. Wake up. Wake, wake up, bro. Come on, what are you doing? Especially music. Look, all musicians, wake the fuck up. Wake the fuck up. This is another thing I love about, about Terrace. Um, you practice a lot, man. You play your horn a lot. You're always getting better. You're always to, focused on getting better. I need to play more, man. I was just, I, I played in the big band situation, me and Kamasi Washington, and uh, I was sitting, I was playing second alto, so I was playing next to the main tenor guy, which which was the great Ernie Watts. And he's he's 80, he, I don't know, he's, he's early 80s or mid 80s, but, man, he was playing so much saxophone. I said, man, what is your secret? How do you... How are you playing that that good? And how are you? Oh my God! What is the secret? And he said he looked at me and said, "I practice." But you know he doesn't really say practice. It's more or less like I I spend time with the instrument. So I've, mm. I, I've been spending time with the horn. I think when you say I, I learned by my friend Logan too. When you say things like practice, it makes you go, "Oh, I didn't practice." Ah, but when you spend time, you know I, I try to spend as much time I can with my saxophone. And in the other instruments, but mainly the saxophone, I try to spend as much time as I can. It shows, man. Thank so, you, man. So one thing I, I really want to talk to you about, because you've been very successful in the uh, evolution of musician to producer, right? Mm-hmm. And so obviously your early days with, with Snoop and everything else, and then progressing into your produce, producing days with Kendrick Lamar and everything that's come mm-hmm. from that. But how did you do that? I don't think you and I have ever really talked about this. How did you go from musician to producer, and when did you do it? And like, was it with a certain artist that kind of? Yeah, I I, I didn't go from musician to producer. I went from producer to musician. Ah, oh. I started producing in fifth grade. Well, doing what in fifth grade? My mother bought me my first SP twelve hundred machine in fifth grade. Then sixth grade, before you were playing sax. Yeah, way before. What? Then, then, that's, then in sixth grade, we my mother bought me the Insonic EPS sixteen plus. Uh, that was a uh, a track workstation that could sample with reverb and all kind of cool things. So I was already doing that, listening to Tribe Call. I, I was just, I, you know, um, the low end theory just turned, I think, 31 or something. And I remember the first day at uh, this, this, the first day at Culver City Middle School when Big Boy, Big Boy, that's on uh, uh, Los Angeles radio station, a 92.3 to beat, yep. was DJ in my junior high school every Friday. And I remember the first time me and my friend, uh, the first day of seventh, the first day of sixth grade, they played. We was on the P field, and Big Boy played "Check the Rhyme," and I was standing right next to Damian Carter. Never will forget. He's a fashion designer now, and I remember we we didn't even know each other. Me and him was two kids in sixth grade. But when the intro went do 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 do, and Big Boy kept running them back. He had doubles do 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 do. Do, and by the time it went, do, 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 me and my friend Damien, that's now one of my best friends. The first day we met, we met because we looked at each other and said, <gasps> that we didn't know how what that feeling was. It, it, it just, when the beat dropped, it was like, oh, back in the days on the, that's my phone. We was like, oh, the whole P feel went, oh, when the beat dropped. And I was like, man, I got to start doing beats. And my cousin uh, named Lloyd, Lloyd Fresh Cuts. Lloyd Brown in Bakersfield, California. He came up with, uh, he was very, Lloyd Brown was very instrumental in Central California for for mentoring cats like um, the world famous, the, the Baker Boys. You know, the Baker Boys had was radio DJs all through LA. So through that, I was learning how to produce. And through that, through my cousin's records and that sampler, I would chop up snares, just chop up kicks. 
then, you know, I didn't start playing the saxophone until a couple of years of that. When I got the ninth grade, um, I was sampling um, on the other, the Tribe Called Quest record, I think Midnight Marauders, they sampled uh, Red Clay by Freddie Hubbard. And I remember I was listening to that, and my dad was like, oh, man, that's Red Clay. And I said, oh, shit, man, that sounds amazing. I listened to that Red Clay album, and I heard a saxophone. I said, oh. But my uncle, Stimsy Hunter, plays saxophone. So uh, it, it started me as a kid seeing the horn, and then falling in love through hip hop to being, I'm gonna play saxophone because then mm. I don't gotta sample saxophone. I could just yeah. let me learn it. And through wanting to do it, then I really got bit with the musician bug when I heard Charlie Parker. But it was always hip hop first and it was always simultaneous and it was always me trying to figure out how to make the musician community a little more different and brighter because I grew up in a real, real musician household. Not. Mm. Not the kind of musician household where your father's doing big time sessions and your mother. No, we, everybody had day jobs and was hoping to get to certain points in life. So my whole thing was like, let me, let me. Uh, I love hip hop, produce records, but let me keep uh, being a musician simultaneously because every instrument I play on the record, I provide a job for a musician. Because my, I'm, I'm, I don't believe I'm here on earth to be the musician that's touring, playing around the world. I, I, I would like to believe in, and, and what I'm walking in is being a human being that supplies other opportunity and other jobs and, and things for other people. So when I play on the record, my only hope is to, that 10 other producers hire 20 other saxophone players or you add that keyboard player, you add that so we can keep the musician community working because without the musician community, none of this is shit. Mm-hmm. Pop, R&B, jet, nobody, all these records, even with the computer, without the musician community, nothing exists, period. Whether you're playing a nightclub, whether you're playing a hotel bar, whether you're making a hit record, you're still doing a service of the people. And without us, the people that make it go, you're not, it's not moving. So I just always want to keep those things turning. That's why I, I, uh, if you see me do a thing where I'm putting focus on, let's say, straight ahead jazz at Jam Card. Yep. Um, it's because I feel the need to put that in the atmosphere. Yep. If you see me do a record with Kendrick Lamar and playing sax, it's because I need to put it put that in the atmosphere yep. with Travis or YG or just me doing just 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 whatever. I'm just trying to make sure shit stay on track or yep. shit don't get off track too far. You know, uh, just I'm here on earth to always maintain a balance. Well, especially the work you did with Kendrick, most notably for free and everything. That was so. I mean, it was jazz driven, mm-hmm. right? It was musician yeah. driven. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, it, it was it was the blues, you right. know, and the blues. No, there's no other way to really uh, 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 paint that particular picture unless you have uh, other human beings that breathe mm. doing that. You know, you, you right. can't, you can't, you, you can't do the blues with Ableton. I mean, you could do something that sounds like it, right? but emotionally to pull, to pull the emotion and uh, spiritually to shift things inside of a human that could only be done by other humans. I love that. So is that why we became friends? I liked your haircut. <laughs> I liked your fucking haircut. That was the first well, thing no, you no, said. We to me. we 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 became friends because I, I t- this is why when you 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 always ask me, do you know that musician, that musician? The reason why I don't know a lot of musicians because my focus really isn't on knowing musicians. Mm-hmm. My focus is on knowing and connecting the dots with others that are trying to make a difference in the atmosphere, so a musician could live in. So I'm careful with my time. So I'm really not focused on or trying to find all the new musicians. I'm right. really focused on building a place that will find them for them. So you're you're one of the people that I kept seeing do that online and 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 um uh pr- pretty much I just kept hearing your name and you were providing a service for artists that normally wouldn't be heard about or seen or even, you know, non-existent. I, I remember in my era and my dad said it was much more better, but in my era it was like, you know, 20 or 30 kids I knew played instruments. Yeah. So we had a community. Um, because of life and different things have evolved in certain ways. And and um, um, I don't like to say things have changed for the worst. I think things have just changed. Yeah. Uh, you've also, you you figured out a way to maintain that we could keep a, all of us could keep a musician-based community. Um, and, and being a musician-based community, let me get that clear so everybody that's wondering. that That's not based on what gig you have, what award you have, what money you have, what who's endorsed by. That's based on you just having the courage to try and to jump in this thing as being a fellow musician, you know. There is no stats in this thing. Everybody's trying to work together, and I truly believe that um, there, there is no stats, and I think that you provided a place that anybody could talk to anybody and get inspired, and I think mm. that's that's really important. That's why 
um, 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 I was so attracted to your spirit because that that's a giving thing. You know, and I love givers. I, I think most most real bosses are givers. Mm. You know, uh, uh, you know, cats that that want to be in certain situations. You could, you know, the one thing they have in common if they if they I, I want to be a I want to be a leader. I want to be this. They the, the biggest thing you have to do for any of those higher level situations is uh, G I V E. Yeah, that's the only secret, and work hard, and that's what you do. Um, so that I try to keep myself around like minded people, but I'm 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 in the trenches with others that don't think like that as well, For sure. and and that's okay. But my mission is to uh, keep the atmosphere going for young musicians and artists or people that just want to think outside the box, and and I feel you do that. You know what I'm saying? Thank you. I I feel you do that too. I I, I get as much. I, I learn yeah, as much yeah. from you, if not more, every time we and hang. We eat good food. We spend a lot of money at Verse. That's it. <laughs> Shout out to Manny. <laughs> Manny Maraquin, bro. Can we get a discount? <laughs> Matt, Manny is the best engineer, best mix engineer, best uh, restaurant. Oh, he is everything. Shout out to Manny. We love Manny. Yes. I love that. I, um, you and Manny are, are, are two of my friends who I like really cherish our, our friendship. I mean, I cherish a lot of friendships, yeah, yeah. but especially you and Manny. I really, I love spending time with you guys. I always, A, we always laugh hard. And the ideas keep going. Ideas are constant. Ideas. And yeah. nobody's, everybody's trying to empower the next person at the table. Yeah. Nobody's yeah, yeah. trying to take. Everybody's trying to give. No, I could give more. I could give more. No, no, I could give way more. No, I could give more than you. I could give more. <laughs> and everybody's trying to give and said, I could take more. I could take more. I could take yeah, more. for sure. You know? Execution. As yeah. well. Oh, you got to execute. Got to execute. You can you talk the execute. ideas all day, but oh, without yeah. that execution, yeah. there's there's nothing. I actually need to, I need, honestly, out of 100 ideas, I only do one of them. Of course. But I'm yeah. sure I have 100 good ones. I, 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 I say them into my phone and never go back. By the time I go back to them, I'm like seven years older. Shit is different. <laughs> I, well, that's what you and I do on the on those morning face calls all the time is yeah. ideas. Let's start a record company and print vinyl. <laughs> that's new. <laughs> There's a lot of ideas. There's a, that's why I'm always like, man, we need to just be, we need to be recording these. I know. It's more know. often. So that's why I'm glad we're just doing yeah, our hang. Yeah, this is the morning yeah. phone call. But just it to, is. It is. But just, uh, and, and that's another thing that I love. Me, uh, with this show, I, I love this show as a, as a vehicle to talk ideas yeah, and to yeah. not... I talk about things that I'm working on that I normally don't ever talk about, like behind the scenes stuff. Yeah. I, I'm very, you know me, I, I don't talk about what's behind the scenes yeah. outwardly until oh, yeah. it's like it's out or it's yeah. already happening right now yeah. or whatever. I like to. Oh, I call you and you're looking stressed as fuck. And I'm like, what's up, bro? You're like, bro, it's crazy, bro. I was just in Dubai <laughs> because we're doing Jam Card on Mars. I'm trying to close a deal with NASA for the to, to fly everybody to Mars. Let's go. <laughs> Let's do it. I'm trying to fly Nard, but the guy, he doesn't like loud music. I'm trying to get him to <laughs> like it, so I'm in Dubai cooking for him. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was a good enough cook to be in Dubai for oh, that. Man, yeah. Is that where we're going right now? You're not vegan anymore, though, right? I'm flexitarian. Flexitarian. <laughs> but well, it, but well, no it, cheese, though. Well, it's some Christian Palmetto, eat. shout out. No cheese, no cheese I, my I man over here. I won't do no here. cheese. I won't do any pork. I won't yeah. do any beef. I won't do any chicken. So you're, so you're pescatarian. Whatever the word is, but mainly I I do make, like if I eat anything that's been living, it's like once a month for probably a piece of fish. But right, usually, right, right. I, I just try to keep it smooth. You know, I don't. But I'm not one of these guys. You got to do it, it, it. That works for my body. Yeah. You know, because I got to get up early. We got I got a kid. I got a studio session. So I'm doing intermittent fasting. Oh, that's that's good. That works. I'm down forty pounds, bro. You look good. Thank you. Appreciate it. Noon to eight. That helps me too. I wake up in the morning. I'm not. How do you know you're down forty? Are you weighing yourself? Or are you just saying that shit? Um, well, I look in the mirror and it, and it screams at me. It's no, like it's 40 pounds, 40 pounds. Um, no, I, uh, I have a scale, bro. Do you not have a scale? <laughs> well, cause COVID I hit peak, peak weight I'd ever been in my life. You was uh, eating good. Very unflattering weight. I must say I was eating good. I was also eating, I was eating bad. I mean, when we were those yeah. first few months of COVID, we were I mean, just you sitting stuck in, in there. Canada. I was stuck in Canada, bro. That's a song. Stuck in Canada. It's about to be. I'll write the lyrics for you, dude. We got it's gonna be a two parter. Come on now. <laughs> um, I remember Facetime with you back then because I was stuck in Canada. I couldn't go outside, and you were like Facetime. You were like in your garage. With the, the yeah, door. yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, your doors are open outside your garage. You're yeah, getting yeah. fresh air. I ain't getting fr no fresh Come air. Come on now. <laughs> um, okay, so 
back to the early days. Okay, so dude, I can't believe I didn't know that you were a producer. For I always uh-huh. thought that you were a saxophonist. And yeah, then no, like, because you toured, you were touring with Snoop as a musician. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was touring music as a musician, but I was still producing all the records as I'm on tour with Snoop. Yeah, oh. yeah. I've, I've, I've never toured with anybody I haven't produced a record for. Right. That was always my thing. I'm not leaving. I'm not going on the road, right? Unless I have more stock into the brand, right, right, right. You know, which is a, a being a songwriter for you sure. Know, if I got stock in the brand, then what most people say the weekly pays and things, yeah. I look at it completely different because instead of a renter, I'm now an owner of something. Right, 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 right. You know? I love that, man. You're not a uh, hired musician on stage. You're a feature because you're also producing it. And and I always had the yeah. studio. On, I was the one that I was the only one that would bring the camera. Yep. And have a studio on the back of the bus. Nice. You know what I'm saying? So I was yeah. able to do a lot of records with Snoop for years on the back of the bus. Snoop, Kendrick, Dinner Party did did incredibly. Yeah. yeah. Our, our plus our equals now I loved. Yeah. Um, obviously now your solo stuff with drones. Uh even you with Leon. Yeah. With uh with Ricky Reed. I know you and Ricky have been out to Ricky Reed. Big oh man, yeah. he, he's He's the cat. Let's talk about you and Ricky because first of all, I, I love I loved all the stuff with Leon and I love Sweeter. That song is just like Thank probably you. one of my favorite songs of the year last Thank year. You. Love that song. And then you introduced me to Ricky the other night, so thank you for that at uh at Beep Studio. And um <laughs> No, it, it was at Henson. It at was Henson. Henson. It was at Jim Henson. <laughs> Um, in the D room, classic room in the D room. If you're ever in Los Angeles, stop by Henson Recording Studios. That's where they did so many records in this whole studio, like We Are the World and Sting Records, and just I mean, tons of shit. Um, tons of Joni Mitchell records, you know, and you know everything. Yeah, iconic, iconic yeah. studio. Yeah. So yeah, so so I feel like your main collaborators right now to me seem like obviously you and Rob are like. Yeah. Forever. Our brothers yeah. and are doing so much stuff from scoring Bel Air to yeah. producing records to t- playing shows. You're doing Rob Tober and you're doing your own solo shows yeah. at yeah. the Blue Note. Um, and you got and you got Ricky. Yeah. Seems like you and Ricky are working a lot yeah. right now. Yeah, we we uh, you know we we have a lot in common. You know, yeah. I, I I think the main thing we have in common is is uh, we both love music to make you feel good. You know, and we love our families. Yeah, you know, I think I think those two things start. Yeah, the relationship and those from then from there, the music is easy once once you really love somebody and you have a brotherhood, a sisterhood, or, or, or whatever with somebody. You, I think the music is the easiest part once once you had a certain level musically. And the next cat is the most difficult thing is any base, any source of communication or finding somewhere mm-hmm. to, uh, uh, I don't want to say compromise, but l- love each other. Yeah, straight up love each other to make the best quality record that you can. So pe- the artists could feel that love, whether it's Lizzo, whether it's it's Leon, whoever you know, yeah. so they could feel that love and 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 them let then once they feel that love on the record, the artist will project that love with their artistry. Right. Then the people will feel that the the consumer will feel that. So sure. I think the love chain starts at the creative thing and mm. goes all the way out to the people. And so for you with these producers, so let's say you with Dr. Dre, you with Rob, mm-hmm. you with um with Ricky. Are you a different presence in those different rooms when you're in the studio with those people? Or are you the same? Obviously, I know you're a very authentic person and you are terrorist. There's no change in that. But like, you, you get what I'm saying? Because obviously, yeah. like, you have you have a deep, deep friendship, partnership with Rob. You have, like, a, it seems like a mentorship with, with like, Dre. Uh-huh. And then, like, Ricky's more of a new thing of the last few years. So yeah. is it, like, how, how are you different or... or or are you not at all in in these different rooms? Well, no, no, I'm 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 not I'm I'm not different at all because I'm I'm seeking knowledge from all of them. Yeah, I'm learning as I work with them. To, to the, maybe to them, I don't. You, could, you 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 would have to ask all of them how they feel with working with me. But to right. me, I'm always just I'm always getting dressed to go to class with them. You know, mm. and you know I'm getting taught by them and the teacher, and I'm just and you know the teacher is the art. Yeah, you know I always say like the biggest ego in the room should be the song. Yeah. You know, so when I'm in these sessions, whether it's with Dr. Dre or uh, Ricky Reed and Robert Glasper, Quincy Jones, whoever, whoever, Herbie Hancock, whoever it is, uh, first of all, I'm shutting the fuck up and just trying to see what's up, what we doing. Yeah. And, you know, um, fill in whatever blanks I could fill in. Yeah. Whether it's starting a composition, ending one, or... I mean, bringing waters into the room and taking pictures on Instagram and just and 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 cheering everybody up. My thing is whatever, uh, whatever helps get that record done. That's contributing that contributing whatever yeah. it is. Rather, I, I've been in sessions where I've bought them. I've 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 drove. I went and go picked up the musicians to bring them to a session. Mm. You know, uh, I've been to sessions to where 
I'm just there to encourage the homie, rather schoolboy Q, like keep going. This is hard. Keep going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been in studio sessions to where my, my, you know, like when we work at Encore in Burbank, this other studio, they have a kitchen in the back. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, you know, uh, me and DJ Quick used to always just bring in um, cookware. You know, we would we would cook breakfast for people. We would cook gumbo for people, tacos. We would just cook sometimes, you know, and just love and make jokes or bring some movies in or something like that, you know. So everything isn't just the music when you're a team player. You know, I've, I've been in all different situations. And I think that's good. That's why I know how to play all the positions. You know, yeah. I, I, I thank God for that. I, I don't believe I would be where I'm at or even growing if I just knew how to play one or two or three for sure. or four or five positions, you know. And, yeah. um, knowing how to play positions, knowing how to deal with rejection and love myself is, is, are, are my secrets. I love that. I love that. I feel like it's like, it's listening, mm -hmm. it's contributing, mm -hmm. and it's no ego. It's egoless. No ego. That sounds like the... No ego, yeah. The summary of the trifecta yeah. of like me, my friend Corday, he's yep. a wonderful artist. We we artists. We were talking the other day, and he made a good point. He said, "You know, ego is projected and comes out when your insecurity is tested. That's usually when somebody flashes an ego. Well, I got this. I got that. I do this. I do. Well, no. What about my my my? Mm -hmm. yep. That usually comes out when 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 insecurity is kind of tampered with. You know." Um, well, one thing I like about working with different people like Robert Glasper and, and Ricky Reed is that it's no room for ego. So mm -hmm. if it's no room for ego, it's 100% love and let's just get the record done. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. we don't, we're not, I'm not talking about business in the room. I think business is very important, but I'm just focused on getting that art done. You know what I'm saying? You know? I have amazing lawyers to talk about business. <laughs> Vicious lawyers that will bite your fucking neck off to protect me so I could just do my art. Or you just call me and you're like, hey, dude, this, hey, can we get me paid first? I'm going to do the next thing. Oh, yeah. yeah and then yeah. I'm like, well, yeah, because I, I got you, bro. Well, I got you. Well, because, you know, I, 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 you know, in the, the music business, the music business is the only one, one of the, that I know that you rush, you do a ton of work. And then you wait to get paid. You don't the the electricity bill isn't like that. The car insurance, the life insurance, the mortgage, um, taxes, these things that we that we pay aren't like that. So I think I said to myself about seven years ago that uh and it's been a long process, but now it's to the point where I treat what I do like like regular life. Cause if my music is a re is a reflection of life. And I'm no longer the artist that's separated from the life. That means I live by the rules of life, just like, just like that civilian walking down the street does. Yep. My art is my art, so we always have to respect that like that. Now, some people, well, it's done like this, done like that, done like that. I'm in the position uh, because I'm confident with myself where I could say, no, fuck that, it's done like this, and without stepping on nobody's toes, right? Yeah. It's done like this because what I'm also remember I said earlier, I'm trying to reshape these things. You know, I know so many amazing musicians that suffer from evictions from from no homes from no gigs from no it's not because everybody isn't an asshole everybody doesn't get drunk everybody doesn't not show up it's a lot of good cats that just haven't had the opportunity or there are no opportunities or when they get one the people that say they need a musician so bad they mistreat them so bad yeah the artists miss they party with you they hang but they they treat you like shit you you you, you make an artist great and they disappear or are on tour or things like that. So what I said to myself is, you know, in order for me not to feel weird about the business, I have to be fair, Elmo. Mm. Fair. Completely fair, right? Now people say, yeah, you know, fair is I'm going to treat you exactly how you treat me from love to energy to blah, blah, blah. Even if I feel I got to treat you, have you in my life, even to the hateful level. Yeah. You know, I, I don't acknowledge the light without acknowledging the dark in anything I do. So um, when I made that statement, like, hey, Elmo, hey, you know, because you're my friend. So personally, I always give my friends because I don't believe in talking personal, 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 personal. And then business comes and you run behind a lawyer or a manager. I 100%, call that 100%. I call that bitch business yeah 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 and we don't do that we men and we we make a lot of money right Elmo yes sir 
the, the IRS already knows, to, so I, I can say it loud. <laughs> so my thing is with, with Elmo, what happened, Splice is beautiful company, Splice. You know, they like everything. Everybody likes it. All their things. Give us all their things. But I felt like, well, shit, I already did 20-some hours on, on the back. <laughs> like, and I, I, I didn't feel like getting dressed that day, honestly. I just like in bed, like, you know what, I'm not going to get up and go do this, and the lawyer still hasn't received the other, you know, the other part. Like, that's just, because you can't order pizza like that. Totally. You can't wait for pizza. So what I did was for all artists out there, not everybody because everybody's not in that position. For sure. But everybody is in the position to speak their heart and to speak their truth and to say things how you would like it. But to all musicians, have some equity in that, though. Know how to do it, when to do it, and have your facts and your business 100% straight. Don't never act on emotion. For sure. That. Those moves don't work on emotion. Emotion will starve you. Somebody just said uh, on Facebook, I said, get rid of the ego, right? And everybody comment. You could tell a lot by comments. Most of my family, right? You could tell a lot by the comments. <laughs> 20 motherfuckers I'm the one loaning money to. But anyway, you can tell by the <laughs> comments. No, the ego is healthy. And the, you mean egoism and ego. You can, they try to get all deep, right? Everybody that wasn't in this, that, all the dreamers understood. You're right. Fuck that ego. The difference between self-confidence and ego is the ego get, gets in the way of the bank. That's the difference. So for all you motherfuckers out there that was confused, that's what I was saying. The ego gets in the way of the bank. Self-confidence helps everything. The other thing that you did, I think, and what made that situation go away was you just communicated. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. And that's and that's well, the you're my friend. We talk every day. <laughs> totally, totally. But but as you were just saying, you were you were you know putting your money where your mouth is, where you were like. If I got a thing, I'm not going to hide. You could have just had your manager or your lawyer hit me up oh, or hit yeah, up my yeah, team and be like, hey, we need this in order to Elmo, whatever. We, we, we talk shit together too much. That's weird. I know. But, that's you weird. Call, but how quickly did we get it done? You called Fast. me. You are like, here's the sitch. I was like, got you. That's solved, solved, that's solved the issue, right? Straight up business. A lot of musicians yeah. don't understand that right there too. I, I heard it happened to me the other day where I, I did, we did a deal with someone that's a friend of mine who I love what he does. And, you know, uh, but, you know, we have teams, right? Mm -hmm. Like part of my team is in here. Big shouts to shout out to the team. Christian and bass, the team holding it down. You know it. We ain't nothing without our teams. At all. We ain't nothing without our teams. Shout out to Samantha Whitehead, Crush Management. All day. Connor, Martin. Yeah, whenever I can't get a hold of you, I just call Sam. Sam, where's Terrace? Okay, cool. Tell him this. All right, great. (laughs) But, um, uh, yeah. So what happened the other day was, uh, I found out from one of my team members, from one of my other team members that like one of our people that we work with was like unhappy or felt like they wanted, I guess, uh, essentially attention, attention from me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. And, but he's also my boy the same way. It's like, it's like, yeah. yo, just call me. Yeah. Well, that, well, that, that's, that's, you know. that's, that's, I, I, I don't know your boy. Yeah. Um, uh, but if I could already what it sounds like, and this is hard for somebody to understand, um, entitlement. Um, I have children. I have friends, family, and we. They. Everybody wants access when they want access. Um, what would help people out is that they could close their eyes. I know it's hard, rather than your financial stress and this, or maybe you feel like you've gotten taken advantage of or slighted. If you could just breathe. And just think about the word consideration and think what that person could possibly be going through during that time or just different things like that. Um, so many times we act on emotion and sometimes the simple calls, people don't want to say that, but sometimes the simple calls ruin five, 10, 20 year relationships. Yeah. You don't know what the other person is going through that day. And some, especially when the other person is, no matter what you don't realize, just trying to help you out. For sure. And it, it, that's why I tell a lot of, uh, most artists, but I, artists are sensitive. I'm sensitive, but the the entitlement thing is deep, you know. And um, I I really wish we could all get through that because in, entitlement keeps you secluded and nobody wants to fuck with you. For sure. Communication and fairness. Back to fairness. Yeah. But be, being fair, uh, let, let's let's identify fair. Yeah. Um, being fair is fair. If everybody can look at their phones, what fair means. Being fair is not. You do me right, I do you right. That's not really fair. Being fair is, is just treating each other. Uh, 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 what I my opinion on being fair is what I've learned. Fair is um, uh, we, we should just work on treating each other how we treat each other. Which means, mm-hmm. you know, like I, I have a friend that 
I love going to restaurants and buying the whole menu for everybody. But I have one friend that always wants to buy his own. Even when we do this, he wants to buy his own. Right. Right? And not yours. And not mine. Yeah, yeah. Right? So I like buying everybody things. Yeah, it is, it is. But he doesn't like that. And he told me the other night, he's like, man, you're not fair to me. I was like, why? He's like, I don't like that, so don't treat me. That's not fair because you're going to make me have to do it. Like, he, he broke down fair a whole different kind of way. Right. So that helps me go into, I think fair is whatever we, we establish our relationship on. Interesting. You know, that, that, that's what fair is fair. And I think people get confused when I say the word fair. They think something else. But you should be careful if you really want to be treated. Because everybody gets what they deserve. Whether it's good or bad, you get what you deserve get all the karma. time. That karma. Get that karma. I ain't even, you got, they get what they deserve, good or bad. Okay, so speaking of someone who apparently feels, <clears throat> seems like they have incredible karma, Herbie Hancock. So, another person who you work with, music direct, play with, and produce. Mm-hmm. So you've been producing the new Herbie album. Can we talk a bit about it? Yeah, we can talk about it. What's the update on the on this Herbie album? Man, you know, we was working hard at it every day, then the pandemic happened. When right. the pandemic happened, it kind of threw a wrench as far as time. But we yeah. grew we grew uh, uh, as far as everything else with life and everything. We actually we stopped working so much together, and I just started going over uh, every day over there, talking and communicating with them, which, was, yeah. which is still part of the project to me. Because, yeah. you know, um, working with a giant like that, this is like nobody I've ever worked with in my life. This is a person that whatever I played, he's heard before. Right. Because it probably stemmed from him or he just was there when it was invented. <laughs> Good point. So me, I have to come with some new things. Like, no, I have to f- have to figure out how he walks, how he talks, how he thinks, how he breathes, only so I could figure out I could kind of, I mean, I can't get close to Herbie Hancock and probably never will, but I could have just a, a inkling of like a, a better idea of how he views things. And I've learned how he views things. He doesn't have any roadblocks in his way. You know, he looks at challenges and accepts them and breaks through them. Um, he under he really understands accountability to a high level, mm. accountability. Um, and he understands dreams and speaking things into existence. So it's like I'm dealing with a very optimistic, positive, but been through a lot of shit kind of person. So I have to think like that to produce a record like that. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't believe in just hey, this is the Terrace Martin sound. Take this. That's I'm not that type of artist in general. I'm like. My job is to, if your canvas doesn't have any color or without an outline, my job is to add to it and help you get to the complete thought. Right. Help you get and try to bring out the best thought in you. My job is to be a friend through the project. Yeah. You know, so with him, I had to just learn to be his friend and all the levels. And, and, and But he's he's a mentor to me. He's he's, he's, he's a father figure. You know, my yeah. father, uh, Curly Martin, uh, my, 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 my mentor, uh, the great Reggie Andrews, who we just lost, a teacher for me, Kamasi Washington, Ronald Bruner, Stephen Thundercat Bruner, so many more. I'm sorry. Uh, 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 Snoop Dogg, you know. Uh, I mean, th- these are men in my life that have been just very present. Like, from me being a father to an adolescent at 12 years old, to me getting with Snoop at 16 years old, mm-hmm. and just, you know, really walking that walk and, and, and doing that thing. You know? So, yeah, because when I think about Herbie, when I see Herbie, and his attitude, it seems like he has such a bright, huge, massive spirit. And also he's got energy. Yeah. And he's 80, yeah. right? Or 81 or 80 or something. He he, he 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 eats a very, he's vegan. There it is. You know, n- n- not a lot of junk food. Um, yeah, because he looks great. Yeah, he looks great. He's always smiling. Yeah. Uh, he seems curious. He's, seems- he's always, he's always learning. He's always a student. Yeah. He's one of the most highest level students I've ever met in my life. Like when you realize when you're around Herbie, you realize, oh shit, I'm I'm never going to be great because this dude is the most. You, I mean, when you say human, you know he really shy. He really makes an effort to put his human before the artistry. Mm. So when you talk to Herbie, when, even when you hear him, you're hearing the human. You know, you're you're hearing the human being part of Herbie when you when you, when you hear him play. You know, that's why it's, it's so adventurous because he's an adventurous human. What would you say is one of the greatest lessons you've learned from Herbie? Uh, he he he's taught me that you could you could find beauty within every problem. I love that. You could find beauty within every problem. One more time, you could find beauty within every problem, and, and what that means just to get a light example. Um, Got to give these examples. Of course, a, a, a light example is if you you know you you going out for audition for a gig. This is light. It's a bigger examples I could get, but this is for musicians. Uh, you know, you you getting a call, maybe MD in this gig or maybe on this gig, you need 
You ain't got no rent. You ain't got none of this. You ain't you, you broke. This you spent your last getting to this art or whatever the case is. You you have no money. You don't feel believed in, and you feel like something is tangible right there that can help you in your life. It's just right there, but then you don't get it. You don't get it. For me, for years, the beauty within those was I, I remember me going out on auditions for a uh, to be a main keyboard player with a group back in the day called Ninety Eight Degrees. <laughs> Yep, and this is before I, I understand about the bullshit that LA does with, with 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 these audition calls. When the guys already know that they they who's going to use in the band, but the labels back then was paying musical directors to have these calls so they could validate where some money's going. So I was one of those kids that believed it was one of these real things in Los Angeles, and um, I uh, I I got a call from Bruce Sterling. That was his name, Bruce Sterling. He was a contractor around LA. Got a lot of people some gigs. And did a lot of fuck shit too. Bruce Sterling. And uh uh made you know, went through all these loops to get the audition. He said, here's the C D. It's two thirty. The audition is at four PM at Third Encore. The office was in Beverly Hills. I borrowed my friend's car. I had, I gotta learn the music. So I said, How am I supposed to learn it? I don't know, figure it out. All right. Took it to Monty's house, drove it an hour over the hill to North Hollywood because she had a keyboard. L- learned the music, all the music. It's 98 degrees. I mean, shit. God bless him, but the music wasn't shit. Not Herbie Hancock. The, I mean, the, it, <laughs> the, 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 the music wasn't good music anyway. Right, right. It just wasn't good. I, yeah. I needed a gig, you know. Yeah, for sure. They probably felt me. They probably felt that. <laughs> but but I, I mean, I learned the music, you know. It's all these guys there. I never, uh, they had, uh, who you know who was there? Um. A, 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 a Los Angeles giant and innovator on bass named Cornelius Mims, a giant, played with Brandy, Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg. A, it's two giants on bass from Los Angeles, Andrew Goucher and Cornelius Mims. These are the godfathers of, like, South Central L.A. bass playing. Everybody want to play like them. To this day, you can't play the Snoop Dogg gig without trying to sound like Cornelius Mims, period. So... Cornelius Mills there, and I was like, oh man, that's Cornelius Mills. And I was playing, he was like, yeah, he was very, he was nice. But I remember I did all that, spent my last 30 bucks, get my friend gas. She had a classic 62 Cadillac, so gas was crazy. <laughs> and I went there to the audition, it was like 50 keyboard players, and, and I didn't get the gig, yeah. you know. So first I was so depressed, man, that, that whole ride home, like, fuck, what am I going to do? I just had a kid young, I got no place, I'm in my mom's couch, I learned all the music. I played the I played just as good as those guys, you know. Actually, I wiped the motherfuckers out at playing that shit. I played the same old triads, the expression, all the shit, the right sounds. I played. Why didn't I get that job? They said if I'm good and I did it right, I'll get the job. Well, that was the time I learned. Hey, it's not about how good you are. Now, being good helps you get there, but getting a gig and keeping is based on personality and trust. Second, I realized, wow, fuck that. I'm never going out for that bullshit ever again in my fucking life. I'm never going to play behind no fucking corny ass pop group and be treated like that. I'm not going to practice all these hours and be treated so bad. That was, they hurt my spirit. I I cried. Mm. I said, I'm never going to do another fucking audition again with those kind of people. Right. And be very specific. I know for a fact, I, back then I was doing eight to nine hours a day practicing, learning different kind of music, loving and just giving. These guys were giggers, like, I'm going to get the gig. Yeah, I will kill you for this gig. And I was coming from a place like, yo, we could all play together. Yeah, and yeah. I said, I'm not going to surround myself with that because, for one, was, these guys are all mean and can't none of them play. Really, they all suck. And they're mean and suck. That's miserable for them. So I'm not going to do that no more because I don't. we don't even joke the same, bro. Right. But I'm not going to audition no more because I don't like the way that feels. So instead of me pouting, let me take my production up a level and start making the records that they got to audition to play. And let me play the parts on the record where they got to have guys like me. They got to have guys that put in that time. They got to have guys that's devoted to really wanting to give a fuck about the music first. They got to have weird, introvert, non-social, probably don't dress the same as you kind of guys. Let me build a universe to where no more fuck boys can control that shit. And let me get all the guys that they kick out these situations. 
So that's when I went and got Ronald Bruner and come on. <laughs> everybody else. The Steven Bruner, you know, uh, Steven Bruner, <laughs> Ryan Porter, Brian Warfield, Marlon Williams, Robert Spud Seawright, Keon Harrell, Ben Wendell, JJ on bass, Monty Noble. Snoop always allowed me to get with these guys and and give them a gig and or, or how or he he would hire somebody like Terrence how you like them they so different because I would knew they was counted out of other circles not everybody not Monty Nuba was never counted out of any circle that's just first of all that's like my I love him that that's my big bro he's a genius um, but everybody else you know I remember you know Spud was coming out of Dallas you know he was doing all the gospel albums but that's all he was doing in Dallas. You know, uh, yep. God's property, which was a big deal. But at, after that, we was floating around. Spud came out here and made a way. Because Spud gave me superpowers when he came to L.A. So we just, you know, but I started getting the guys that I felt were just bad motherfuckers that may have been outed by other crews that couldn't acknowledge that level of musicianship. Because I was born and raised by a crew of bad motherfuckers that was outed by people, too. And what I didn't want to do was get a crew of guys that fell into what people called the Los Angeles Hollywood thing because you dress away or you're on a certain gig that you're cool with everybody. Mm -hmm. I want to get the cast that know his raw ability without any superstar next to him will fuck you up and you'll want to dress like him and be like him. I want to get cast like that. I want to get all leaders so we couldn't have no egos. So if I got all bad motherfuckers and leaders, that's everybody. Spud is my master teacher, by the way. He's my man. I I I put him on with Snoop and all the other L.A. shit, but musically and big, but that's just my master teacher. I just had access. Yeah. And when I got him, he and he, trust and trust. But yeah. when I got with him, he made th those other guys trusted me more. He Spud made me look good. Of course. To this day, he does. Of course, you know. Yeah. So, which is why you're still having him in the studio the other night. I'm not gonna everything. never not have yeah, him. Yeah, exactly. My, you know, it, that till I die. That's that. That's my commitment to God, His mom, and then Him. I know? gotta go see him on that Toto gig now. I, uh, I really, mean, I really want to see it. And I, I love Toto, but I yeah. know he's making that shit crazier now. I, that's what I'm Period. saying. Period. Because Spud's the new fly shit. Toto got the hits, but you gotta have some new. In. And Don't he's look, such a different drummer. Hold on, hold on. Let me get. Let me get back. Fuck all that. Yeah. The, the, having the hits is cool, but today to inspire other young musicians and other fly shit, you gotta throw that new shit. So shout out the total for having the balls for having the courage to come in and get one of the realest ones from our world and putting them on that that's cool they got the hits and they have done some trailblazing things but spud has inspired so many young black kids to play an instrument and not go to jail yep now, i could have been a guy straight up full-fledged all the way crip with it all the way mm -hmm. and seeing spud made me change so that's cool he's with total yeah but a gig doesn't define who he's a giant he is. And I always want to, that's my mentality with all these guys. Like, the gig is cute, but nah, motherfucker, that guy is bigger than the gig. I agree. And that's what what I was going to say is that I, that's why I want to see him on the gig because I know he's going to have so much influence on it. I remember my mom went and said she couldn't stop moving. She wow. said she she's heard all those songs, but not like that. this. I love that. And with Xavier on keys, too. Oh, and he, now I met him through Spud. Xavier Taplin. That's exactly he's a, he, who I now, met so they got, to as well. Yeah. So total. I met every, I've, I've, met, I've met so many people yeah. through Spud. Yeah. Spud brought young JD and Domi around to me six years ago or whatever. And like, Spud, and, Spud like, is the master. Bro, yeah. nobody, in this, nobody in this universe is fucking with the level of ability Spud has. Yeah. That's not saying nobody's greater. or That's just saying that yeah. type of ability. Yeah. To hear and play whatever you hear is special, and not a lot of us have that. Big shouts to Sput. Oh, without him, there's no Terrace Martin for sure. I love that. I love that. Uh, Drones came out this year, your solo album. I love so many of the tracks on it, and then on the on the opening single, Drones, you had you have Kendrick on it, mm -hmm. you have Snoop on it. Ty's on it too, right? Ty, you got Ty, Ty Dolla Sign, <laughs> James Fauntleroy, James Fauntleroy, everybody, uh, all of all of the LA goats surrounding it which is also funny because earlier you were saying like oh yeah when i was growing up I, you know i have my 15 musicians that are all <laughs> yeah. everyone has I mean, grown that into was giants even, everyone has grown into J giants J james Fonleroy. yeah that's, that's my community yeah ty dollar sign his dad was one of my mentors growing up through la it's I, like this it's like everybody that i know these names sent and thank god these names ring bells yeah but these names were the same names before we all had ten dollars of shipment for one gas that didn't get gas that's so crazy and mark my words on this show we're going to do the documentary on Everything from West Coast Get Down to yeah. your whole, to yeah. Sounds of Crenshaw to yeah. everything because like 
people don't realize how far back you all go, and it's oh, such yeah. a huge community. And the West Coast get down. Like, ev- ev- everything is spun from. Everything is spun off of Lamert Park. Yeah. Everything is spun off of Lamert Park. Nothing is nothing without Lamert Park and Billy Higgins. Nothing is nothing. So now, and I want to get to Sounds of Crenshaw too, your label and everything you're doing with that. But but first for Kendrick, so you've watched Kendrick and were uh, a, a part of Kendrick's uh, development and growth and everything that he's mm-hmm. become. And he's so untouchable, right? And he's also so unaccessible, mm-hmm. right? In terms of just even like, I see all you guys around, never see Kendrick around. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'll, see, I'll see his entire crew, not him ever, mm-hmm. right? It's like, like outside of just his like artistry being amazing, he's mm-hmm. but he, but I also hear how important he is to all of you and everything. So like, between him as like as like a brother, and I know you're learning a ton from him, and I know he's also learning mm-hmm. from you. Like, what is that relationship like with Kendrick? It's beautiful. Um, I want to go back to you always see us around, not him. You're and I. Um, I tell. I tell my wife this a lot. Sometimes, you're privileged, and we are privileged to know you. But you're one of our newest friends that we let see us a lot because yep. we're not seen ever. We just see you a lot. That's mm. on purpose. And we see Kendrick a lot. That's on purpose. But we none of us fuck with really the outside world like that. Right. Um, and when I say the outside world, I mean, like, I don't think you'll catch any of us at a random spot. Like, you know, you, you, you'll, you'll catch me at the local taco spot in L.A., our jerk chicken. You know, bomb ass, bomb ass Jamaican food called Aki Bamboo in the Murray Park. Before you catch me at like a a musician or a function like that, only because it, I talk for me, but I talk for m- m- most of my you, me sound like like as much as everybody loves music. I think at this point everybody's so inspired by life, mm. our children, colors we see, birds we hear chirping, walk. You know, even as dark as the news is. I said earlier, you have to acknowledge the dark to even see what the light is. Even the, it's so much going on in the world to 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 be out in public, getting more music in you is 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 when you're on a mission. Sometimes it could be bad for you when you're on a mission because how do you know what to do to heal people if you're surrounded by just music and musicians all the time, just doing? You got to know how people want to be healed. You know, just j- just because you scrape your knee. On the floor, that person, one person may need a Band-Aid, one person may need surgery, one person may need a massage. It's all different ways of healing, but there's no way to tell unless you're living that human environment. And sometimes when you're in a environment, for me, when I'm in an environment with musicians, it, 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 and I don't want it like this, but it, it, sometimes it tends to be less human sometimes and more musician. Like, we're not humans, you know? So that's a good thing why you don't, you people, you see us because you, we talk about human things. But we, whoever li- you could, t- you listen to t- man. Ain't nobody nowhere to be seen because there's nothing to talk about. Right. We got to do the action. Kendrick is smart. He's he now. I'm. We already a ghost. This motherfucker is a ghost. Ghost. You know what I'm saying? He'll be having a whole talk with you back and forth. I'm talking to him on t- on t- 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 text the other day. Like, where were you at? Like he's in he's in Europe somewhere. It's a weird time of the night. And but he's 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 there when he wants to be. He's there when he needs to be, and he's always there for who we feel he has to be there for. Mm. You know, he he does uh, uh, he does. I mean, at least I know a lot of us. We we value time, so we don't want to waste time with people we don't need to waste it around. We want to give time and appreciate time with those we need to be around. That goes into the whole not being seen or being seen. Because it's not really not being seen; it's not really being that accepting of a lot of other energy other than what we choose to be accepted. Uh, uh, you know, it, you, you know what I'm trying to say. We just really. We already don't have that many options in life because life is, you see the whole pandemic shut us down. So when you live like this, you provide yourself options of what you want to take in. You know, for me, I'm taking in, my, I'm more taking in the human experience. Like I love taking my daughter to school. I love talking to other parents. I love talking to you on the phone. I love talking to things that's nothing about music because the people that play my music aren't all musicians. You know, I don't even like when musicians come to my show because they always want to crack a laugh at one of my jokes. And then say, hey, man, can you put me on the list? By the way, just because I don't believe in guest lists. The only guests are my mother, my wife, and my children. Um, I don't believe in guest lists. And my theory is because Spud taught me, if your friends know that you do this for a living, why would they ever ask you to put them on a list? 
Let that sink in for a minute. Mm. So we've talked about this a bunch, but what, so currently, because I feel like it evolves, what is, what does drones mean to you? The message of the song and, and, and everything. Man, we better get this shit together because we are all drones. We are all, uh, uh, we are, we, we've all became robots now, you know, the pandemic's the prime example. I mean, if that wasn't the drone, is thing like, everybody get in the house, shut the fuck up. Okay. Boop. Everybody take this vaccine now. I know some people didn't. I, yeah, 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 yeah. But for the most part, you, you, you get the vibe. They start setting up shit in grocery stores. Before it was this exclusive thing with the vaccine. Then you start being able to buy that shit at 7-Eleven next to the hot dogs. You know what I'm saying? So the, the way the world just told us to do something and we did it not saying it's bad or good that's for you to decide but those are these are those are things like we we, we are all drones you know mm. think about it we meet we, we have tinder now you can meet the love of your life on tinder that means the person could put in whatever the fuck they choose to put in without meeting them and you're gonna believe it and you're gonna say come over to my home <laughs> Speaking of that, and with our phones and drones and going home, I was driving to my friend's house yesterday. And my and my other friend was in the car, and I had the address in uh, Google Maps, right? And I and so I follow Google Maps like religiously, and I know where my friend lives, and I'm driving straight to my friend's house, which I've been to twenty times, and it told me to go left and then go right and take this weird route, and I started doing it, and it took me all off, and it was taking me literally out of the way. And my my friend that was in the car with me was like. Why are you why are you doing that? Their house is over here. And I was like, I don't know. I'm just following I'm just following Google Maps. And even though I knew to get to his house, I go this way. Maps told me to do this. Yeah. And I, and I, it was clearly a bug in the app or whatever, but I just did it. Yeah. You it, followed the map. I'm a drone. You could have <laughs> the, yeah. the phone, the algorithm was guiding me and I just started going even though I was like, "Well, my friends over there. I know exactly where. You're. Okay, it's just to go this way." I'm not being real. I'm looking, I'm supposed this guy's dropping off a mic. Hey, do your thing. This is Drones. I, that's one of my so that's my favorite song on the album. Yeah, that's the song you, I've listened you. to the most. Drones is obviously like the smash, and yeah. that was the first one you showed me, and I was yep. like, "Whoa, this is the anthem. This is crazy." I have so much new music to show you too. I can't wait, dude. On the deluxe, we we just got done with the deluxe. Drones make clones, so we're doing like a short film for that right now. We got, oh, um, special guests on it. I got, I got a cold blooded remix to Drones with with Channel Tress on it. That's just out of here. Amazing, dude. So uh, and also. This is our announcement. People don't know this yet, but ladies and gentlemen. Wait, wait, wait. Are you going to tell them now? I was thinking about it. Fuck it. Let's do it. Ladies and gentlemen. Fuck. I'm happy to announce. Fuck. Coming soon. So. The Terrace Martin Sample Pack. Terrace Martin Sample Pack. From Jam Card Samples on Splice. Wait, hold up. <laughs> It's not called the Terrace Martin Sample Pack. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> coming soon. It's called the Terrace Martin Presents the Make Believe Files. Make Believe Files. It is the files. Volume one. It's not a pack because it's going to change your life. Oof. It's not a pack. Every, you, every, every, everybody makes packs. They they go into their computers and they they tap their drums and they, they put them on these things. I've heard everybody's thing. This was done for this. This was done for this with the concept and the creative mind that I've done so many other records with in the studio called Make Believe Studio in Omaha, Nebraska. Um, tracked and mixed by myself and the great Rick Carson. Rick Carson is also a master engineer that masters all dinner party records. Everything I do, so much shit for Kendrick, everything I do, Rick Carson is like the man, you know, so... You know, we were able to go out to Omaha, Nebraska, which is the place that I did my album, Velvet Portraits, at. And I started so many ideas for different huge albums, whether it's Sizzle, whoever the case. I always tend to start at this particular studio called Make Believe, ran by Rick Carson. And I like it because um, it has all of my vintage, most of my vintage keyboards. I have collections everywhere. You know, I have four and five studios. But two of my favorite fact tracking rooms are Make Believe in Omaha, Nebraska, and where we're at Steakhouse right now. These are two tracking, my highest level tracking rooms. Um, I love Make Believe because all the instruments are going through this warm old API console. Then we're putting things through Neve 1073s, flicking through EQs, Poltex. We're running different things to classic Fender Reverb twin amps with just the most succulent tubes, warming up everything. The drums I'm using are 
mainly the drums I use for mainly all my records. But these aren't drums out the computer. These are drums on purpose. These are drums that are hitting life. These are drums that are hitting. I'm hitting the drum. It's going into the classic C414 EBs with the brass cap. So going out of that into a, uh, either a 1073 and then out of that into some type of 1176 or maybe we end it with the chain of an API 550B or a Flickinger EQ. So these are things that are really sonically presented to the people in a whole different way. These aren't things like, oh, yeah, splice, yeah, let me just give them some shit for splice. Like, no, this is like, no, 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 let me treat this like I treat a record. You know, let me fly to Omaha, Nebraska. That's why I told you I'm not doing shit till they send me my goddamn money. Let me fly to Omaha, Nebraska and spend 20-some hours in the studio going, <laughs> pap, pap, do, do. You know, I'm bringing out all these things, and it's like, uh, it's, it's really interesting. You know, the keyboards itself, I bought out so many vintage drum machines. I bought out my real LM1, the real 808, the real DMX, my classic MPC sounds, but nothing is just with a computer. Everything is going through something with real capacitors, real transistors, real signal flow. I'm dealing with really impedance going in for the system so you could have this in your... And people say that shit. You could have this in your home too. No, fuck that. I've already done all the API, all the other shit, so now you can have this in your home. You can, And you can, it's still room on the instruments where they sound great, but I wanted you to carve out your sound. You know, my sound is good. My sound, it works for me. But don't use these just to do the sound. Use these to carve out your sound. And make your sound, you know, make your sound with these. Like, that's what we do with instruments anyway. And I really put it, I just wanted to, to provide a sense of warmth to people when they get these splice things. I love all the other things with splice. Um, I love the choir one a lot. Yeah. You know, a, 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 few, of, a, a few of my field, they should have had mix engineers. Yep. And a few of them feel they should have have really studied signal flow and distortion, different things like that. Because when you do these sounds, you want to make sure you give the listener and the consumer enough headroom that they could drive it how they want to drive it um i still believe in giving people options but giving people for sure things as well too and i, I feel me and you accomplished that with this sample pack i love it man and so yeah there's drums keys saxophone bass, saxophone of course uh g- going through my, my chain i do all my saxophone with that's uh my elamp uh, my elamp 251 with a neve 1073 going through original blue stripe 1176 for those that care and want to know about that stuff. A lot of people do care. And want With to all, all Megami cables. <laughs> Gotta. Yeah, duh. Obviously. Like, I, n- nothing on this sample pack. Like, you're not getting shit from Ableton going into your Ableton. Right, right. You're not right, getting right, right. shit from Recycle going into you. You're not getting things that's already existing in a software world. Yeah. These are from me to the desk of warm capacitors and everything to you. Now, you're going to be the first one putting them in the box. I love that, man. I love it. And it sounds like you, too. It has a real signature sound to it. Yeah. I feel like there's so much personality in it. Yeah, So word, much personality word, in it. Word. Uh, it's going to be make-believe files. Make-believe files, man. And the studio, you know, um, if you guys go online, man, just look up make-believe in Omaha, Nebraska. Um, the drum sound he gets. Like, we spent hours just dialing the snare. Like, Hours. We were just like, no, no, oh, no, oh, no. bottom stairs. Oh, oh, oh. We would just spend hours with the snare. And, you know, then I went to the Jupiter and I, I have all these things I, I wrote down from different things I've done where I just put them on the, you know, re, we got to reprogram them live. And, you know, when we, 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 we spent a lot of time so people could really have a certain type of foundation to build from there with, with this, you know. So it's, it's, it's more of a kit that you could do everything with and you could get inspired. Or you could even put some things on loop and just listen and you could just. You know, I was trying to write songs and give you songs and have you chop a thing. That's what it sounds like, yeah, because yeah. Spice has what they call stacks, right? Where if you, like, stack the yeah the drum and the, the drum loop with the keys. and the, Yeah. So, yeah, so there's, like, you can you can stack these, but you can also, like, isolate them and you can mix them in so many ways or just take yeah. the little small nuances, cutting samples off of. You could do what the fuck you want with so them. I'm done. Do it's your it. turn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Matter of fact, <clears throat> please let me hear some shit where I can't tell it where it came from. And this is a long time in the making. Cause you know I was against doing this shit. You were, but it took it took me a minute. I did it because <laughs> I, I I did it because when I was in the pandemic, I felt bad and saying, man, I I need to contribute more. I, I yeah. need to give. I need to I need to give more to that to to the world that do that. Yeah, I was being like an old man and just fuck that. I don't want to do. But now I'm like, you know what? I need to. If that's what's inspiring the younger people to go, the kids to go, then let me let me not be on the sideline. Let me be into that and let me help do do my part with art. Yeah. And you did, man, and it's and it's uh, it's awesome. I'm excited for everyone to finally Thank get you, it. Man. So you heard it here first. Oh yeah, it's going down. 
Terrace Martin presents The Make Believe Files. Let's get it. Volume one, I don't know. That's, you know what? Who knows? Who knows? I'm starting to get into this this one thing now and just something new. What thing? Just doing one and come with a whole nother thing. With oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't need to because be. Because it's, it's, it's going to sound different. If I do, it's going to sound different, you know. I'll talk to you off the camera. What we got going on now? Some other shit. A little BTS. That was inspired by you. Oh. We're going to cut back to that, guys. Remind me. Take a note. Talk to Terrace about it right after. Well, th- th- this project really opened me up for a few other ideas. Okay, great. I love it, man. I love it. Once again, let's do the ideas. Let's fucking execute on it. Let's them. execute on it. Let's yes, build on that shit. Yes, yes. Let's be building. We still need to do something back to Manny, you, me, and Manny together. We did Black Power Live, which was awesome. Which was awesome. Yeah. Racism on trial. Yeah. Let's amazing. talk about that. So we've done a lot together, man. Yeah. We did we obviously did our we did the jam jam. We did Gray Area. Uh Gray Area Live at the Jam yeah. Jam. You guys have seen this video. Come on, you've seen the the video. I'm, I'm ready to do a gray area a gray area too. Let's do a gray area too. You know, gray area is ever growing. It's not just yeah. one set of musicians. It's, it's it's gray area is about me highlighting gray area is a foundation for me to highlight people I feel that need to be highlighted. Yeah. You know. That one obviously uh, had Ronald Bruner Jr. Yep. with, I think, I'll, I'll say from one of my favorite, one of my favorite drum performances. Yeah. Not just of his, but just of any drummer yeah, yeah, ever. No, and he's like probably, Phenomenal. when it comes to the my favorite drummers, Ron's got to be at the top. Yeah, he is. And that performance of his with him having all the drummers around him and all the audience all around him, him with you, yeah. your uh, the energy and the yeah. push and pull and the everything that you guys do on and off stage. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, and everything. That, that, that was ma- a real display of our friendship. Everything that made that. It felt, you know what, it felt like a like a pressure cooker, like creating a diamond. Oh, yeah. It really did, because you guys were all in. We packed 300 people in United Studio A. We didn't see none of those people. There have never been that many people in United before, and there never will be again, they told me. (laughs) Even though nothing went wrong. We didn't break a single thing. Yeah, Didn't break a single thing. But that, with the energy, with having, like, I mean, with the audience, and then then Paul Cornish shining like crazy on that album, Paul Cornish is a genius, man. I met Paul Paul through Herbie Hancock when he was younger, man. Yeah, you told me about Paul. Herbie said, man, stay close to that cat. So I've been, Paul Cornish is the future. You know, he's the future. Paul was great. And then, obviously, we had uh, Kamasi Washington. Kamasi Washington. Ben Wendell came. Um, yep. It was, you know. It was, Joshua Crumbly. Maurice Brown. I yes, met Mo Betta that yes, night. Yes, that Maurice was the night Brown. you introduced me to Mo Betta. Yes, yep. He yep. flew in for it. That's what he do. Yeah, man. That's my brother. <laughs> we did that together, which was amazing. So that's, by the way, the still the only full-length album that is out on uh, the DSPs from the Jam Jam. So we got to do one more, part two. Let's do it. Let's part do it. Two. I'm ready. December. I'm, I'm, I may have some surprise. A new unit. It might be different. New unit. Let's get it. We did racism on trial for Black Power Live, yep, which was amazing. Area. Yeah, raised a bunch of money. That was a different gray area. Didn't that you? was different gray area. Still with Kamasi plus Rob Glasper plus yep. Trevor. Yeah, we keep going. Plus the plus the plus the younger. Yeah, we went for the uh, <laughs> the younger band, yeah, the younger yeah, gray yeah, area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, I mean. Joshua Crumbly and Paul still, her Paul was still in it. Yeah, Crumbly's yeah, young. Yeah, yeah, Dominique. Dominique, right? Uh, yeah, it was Dominique Pinson and and Jonathan Pinson. Yeah, Jonathan Pinson. Yeah, that was great. And we did that with Manny. I guess that was the one thing we, you and I have done with Manny Shit, together. I mean, I mean, that's a record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Might have pulled that. Yeah, we should we should put that out. <laughs> pull that out because we got the files. You know? Take a note. Um, so there's a lot. So there's another thing I want to talk to you about. Um. You have five kids, mm-hmm. and ranging in age from 20, 25 to five, from five to twenty five, from five to twenty five, uh-huh. and you're a very busy guy. Yeah, um, and you're a very present guy. Mm-hmm. Like whenever we hang out, whatever we, t- I always feel like I got you. Like mm-hmm. we're you're in it, right? Mm-hmm. How do you, how do you do it? You don't. You just you don't think about how to do it. You just try to give as much time to your kids and everybody and family as you possibly can. It's, 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 it's a very ongoing thing that takes a lot of forever effort. You know, it's, it's, it's hard being in demand and also being in demand with a family, it's, uh, especially because when in demand is, is is making sure everybody's rolling right. Yeah. It's a very hard thing because kids don't give a fuck about that. It's just time, which is mainly important. So it's a hard thing, you know. Um, f- for those that say they got it under control, 
I 100% believe they're pathological liars. Mm. And it's an ongoing thing where people, you know, you know, you got to have time. You got to make time for what's important for you. And it's not about that. It's, it's really about living and just trying your hardest till it's over. Mm. You know? I love that. Trying hard till it's over. But it's never an answer for that. Uh, it's never. If, if you, it's, you know, I always say being an artist is one thing. Being a working artist is another thing. Being a successful working artist is another thing. Being a successful, popular working artist are totally different things. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? And it's. Yes, you do have the household. That is your responsibility. Those are your children, and the the and it, but I, but I do commend my children and, and and my woman and my family for sharing me because I, I I also belong to the community. Yeah, equally. Yeah, you know. And um, how do you have that communication? I guess with your wife, it's a commitment that I made myself before her in yeah. seventh grade that I I got to commit to what is, is feed my soul and feed my family and feed so many others. And with her, you know, she's a good player, team player, where she know, you know, if if her man could do what he's supposed to do, he'll forever make her happy. Mm. You know, I mean, as you know, much as I can, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, I mean, it's it's an ongoing thing. It's not easy for nobody, though, because everybody's human – and like we said, everybody, I mean, every, earlier, everybody wants access. And everybody thinks, you know, somebody somebody said, oh, man, people get mad on picking my phone. And I heard somebody say, well, my other friends does this and they pick up the phone. How come you don't? I always say to them, well, maybe you should call them motherfuckers all day. <laughs> the fuck? Because I don't want to pick up my phone all the time because I, I have to do a lot of things that people don't normally think about. I have to do with, with children and, and life and everything because I do try to be present, more present, you know. So for me, for example, we just did Napa. Um, me and Robert Glass were just yep. in uh, the Blue Note Festival. The Blue Note Festival, Snoop Dogg, and everybody was there. Thundercat, and everybody. Yeah. yeah. So events like that, you know, I make a lot of money at those events, but I pay out because I, I got to fly up. I got to fly up my children, my family. I can't be going to a place that nice for two weeks and just not take a family with me. So I got it's a workation. It's a workation. Yeah. So you know, I I think the vacation stay very mighty in my world. Yeah. Um. And sometimes that's not enough. But I'm I'm a, I'm gonna keep doing what I do till the wheels fall off because my commitment is for the service of of, of good, you know. And and my children are strong, especially my uh, my, my baby girls with me every day. So I, she she really gets the bulk of really having to share me. You know what I'm saying? And 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 it it's never it's never perfect, you know. But and I didn't make the rules, but it is what it is too. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? This 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 is what. This is what happens when you make a certain choice. Connor is awesome. You're your five year old, and she's here right now. And she's also, here. she was at the jam jam. She was at she's gray here. area. B yeah. B is holding her. Yeah. She's like two years old. She's there. Yeah, she's always she's, with me. She's sitting there in the front row of in that video. Row. You can see you're playing sax. You're giving yeah. it your all. You're playing the blues, and she's like, yeah, right, she's right there. Yeah, two yeah. years old. That's amazing yeah. what she's absorbing. Yeah, my father, my, my my father was like that growing up. He he didn't really, you know, some people raise their children different. My father didn't separate life. I didn't put age in front of nothing. So I, I was always with him on some real grown shit, some real gangster shit, studios, music. I was always with my dad for the ups and downs. You know, my dad is a real solid dude and, and a real solid artist and a real solid father and a street dude at that, uh, uh, you know, like really been through some real street stuff. So it's like it was never separated. And I have a friendship with my father. Yeah. So when, when I believe when, uh, and he is my father, I respect him as my father, but as my friend, I was able to tell him everything. He knows everything about me. And I think with your children these days, it's, it's kind of important to still set boundaries, but uh, children don't want to talk back to their parents about everything. They want to talk to their friends. I think right now for me, for me personally, I like being very close with my children, you know, and know everything without chastising them and judging them and just listen, even with the wrong mis- things they say, I wait a few days and I try, I try to give, I say, if I don't, I don't say nothing was wrong without me giving five or six solutions and me helping be a part of these solutions to make it uh, 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 not an easy trans, uh, tra- transition, but but further, but more or less a transition that daddy's there with you, you know. So that that's my thing with having Connor around. I, I want her to see that as I do an interview, she has to go to the other room. Because one day she may be doing this or maybe working for this. Or she just needs to know that when daddy is out, I'm not bullshitting. Mm-hmm. I'm not fucking with women. I'm not... I'm not at the strip club. I'm not buying out the fucking bar. I'm not hanging with a bunch of musician friends slapping fives every fucking night of the week. I'm doing something to better us, to better the world. So you need to see what I'm doing when I'm not around you. 
Yeah. And that way everything will be not keep intact. But at the end of the day, they always got to go back and say he wasn't bullshitting with the time. She's seeing how you lead and how you build. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because after this, when we're done with this, I'm eating my food, I'm taking her to swimming. Yeah. We go to swimming practice. Then I'm back daddy time, and I take her home, her mama. I get high, I call you, I get, I find where you at 10 o'clock at night, get a fucking drink, and we get the fuck out. <laughs> we do the same thing every day, you know? And I think so, yeah, big shouts to to Curly, your dad. Curly Martin one time, my dad sending love and strength to him. Let's go. Lots of love and strength to him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And uh, and you're playing, you're doing the Blue Note as Curly, your new your new trio? Is that the organ what? trio? Quartet. It's quartet. an organ quartet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, my father loves organ, and yeah. that's why I grew up in a house of organ players and knowing that Jimmy Smith sound, Jack McDuff, Larry Young, uh, you know, all that sound. So um, my father is one of my main in- inspirations. And we, 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 The word curly means feeling to me because mm. he's all about soul. Like we talk, His favorite drummers is like James Gatson and Elvin Jones. and you know, He could give a fuck about your chops. He's all about soul. and But still chops is important because – for execution, you know, we, we want to be able to, it's like, if you, people say technique's not important, okay, well, try reading the book without reading technique, you yep. you have to know how to read, yeah, you yeah. know, the cat ran up the hill, <laughs> so, you know, we're not, we're not never excluding technique, right, that's important to practice and get full facility and command of your instrument, but we, he loves the feel, so I wanted to name a group Curly in honor of him. Uh, while he's on earth so many people get honored when they die I yeah. want to honor my father and those yeah. I love yeah. that's why I, I fuck with you I want to honor you I want to honor why we all alive you yeah. know so I, I want to name a group Curly that the strict uh, point of this group is to restore a feeling and I want to do my part in, in helping keeping that organ group very visual because the organ group taught me about everything without yeah. the organ in my life it would be no hip hop the organ is like a jukebox to me when a cat get on organ he's supposed to be able to play everything from jazz R&B to hip hop to funk. The organ was made to to sound like an orchestra, to sound yeah. like a big band with horns and flutes and everything. So at one point, the organ was the most crazy synthesizer ever. I want to bring back those bare elements and give people a feeling as a point of foundation, mm-hmm. along with me doing all. I'm always going to be thinking about the future in the next 50, 100 to a million years ahead. Yeah, But I can't think that far without always going back to my point of foundation, finding new directions. So the organ group is one of those exercises as well, and hopefully people are inspired by that. I love that, dude. So Sounds of Crenshaw right now, your label. Sounds of Crenshaw. Your community, really. Yes. I uh, just did a deal. I just did a huge partnership with BMG. It'll, huge. it'll, 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 we're doing a press release, but I can, this is for my, my community right here. Yeah. But I just did a huge press, a huge deal, a uh, nice partnership to where BMG has offered to, has, has been able to come into my world of Sounds of Crenshaw. Uh, we started, we, we've named it Sounds of Crenshaw Jazz. Because I'm really focused on producing young jazz artists and jazz records, you know. And when I say jazz, jazz is so wide, you know. Um, uh, but mainly my focus is instrumental music and music, music that people can vibe to and everything like that, you know. Like So j- jazz to me is anywhere from John Coltrane to Grover Washington to Patrice Russian to Tribe Called mm-hmm. Quest to Kenny G to Pat Metheny, you know. Because, I, I, by the way, for those purists, I, Kenny G is part of Smooth Jazz is, is part of my whole mission too. Uh, smooth Jazz is very big in my community in the black community. Um, uh, I always say, you know, Kenny G and that music was so big to my mother and everybody that those records came out during the, during the time of like the crack era and in South Central LA, gang banging was hype and Kenny G and David Sanborn and George Howard and and of course the great the God Grover Washington Jr. He's he's on top of he's the mountain, but. That music was soothing our parents and our mm-hmm. and our loved ones while we were going through so much pain and 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 and, and torment and to, to our culture. Especially, I don't I can't speak for nobody else's family, but for me and my family in South Central LA, we love Kenny G. We love all the cats that people normally don't love because we just love good music. And with sounds of Crenshaw Jazz, I want to tap on all that. I want to tap on smooth jazz. I want to tap on acoustic organist i want to tap on new cutting edge blending i, I want to tap on anything that's under that jazz umbrella like when you think of i mean i, I mean I, I hope one day to be just as big as um, atlantic records you know when you think of atlantic records the early days they had johnny griffin john coltrane you know ray charles atlantic records was built on the back of jazz musicians mm-hmm. so you know um um i'm not trying to build anything on the back I'm trying to include all, until I die. Yeah. So right now my foundation is what I love, jazz, and I hope to inspire others that love what I love, young kids, and give them a shot. 
because it's it's a lot of kids that like the style of music that I want to give them a way to do it. So you know, we 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 did, we did a partnership with BMG and it sounds of Crenshaw Jazz slash BMG. Congratulations, man! Thank you, man. Thank and you're going to be producing a, a series of albums for other I, I'm uh, for a, artists. I, I, there'll be. Hey, man, me and you talked about one because because I, I always hey. said you know you 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 have the power when you play. To make people dance, you know. Yeah. That's I, I remember hearing those old Alphonse Muzan records, you know, where you know he was just, you know, you hear Alphonse Muzan on a, on a, some jazz shit earlier, but then he was doing hit records. Or you hear, you hear the great Lenny White, and you hear with them hit records. So I'm still trying to make people dance. Yeah. And move like I'm loving the whole lo-fi music. Peace, yes, peace yes. out to all my lo-fi partners. Kiefer, I love Kiefer. You know what I'm saying? He's a bad, bad musician, bad artist. And just, you know, it's, it's all kind of things out there, man. But I, I want to do my part and bring more of a light to that as much as, I, as much as I do my part in pop culture and different things like that as well. I love it, man. Well, I'm, I'm hyped. I'm hyped to contribute in any way I can. And uh, just as a fan, dude, I'm really excited to have Thank for you, everything, everything you. you got going on, man. Thank you, man. Thank you. Terrace Martin, ladies and gentlemen. Peace, peace, peace. Where's the fuck the claps at? Where's the fucking clap? <laughs> Shit. Ladies and gentlemen. Terrace Martin. Hey, now. Musicians, don't borrow money. <laughs> <laughs>